Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Machine Dreams, the show where builders and thinkers in the AI space drop the polished lines and talk honestly to us about the messy parts, the breakthroughs, the lessons, and perhaps even the strange future that is racing towards us. My name is Kolawali Samuel Adebayo. I'm a technology analyst and a Forbes contributor, and I'm joined here by my remarkable co-host. Hey, Sam. I'm Leia Stern, a global communication strategist and venture capitalist. Great to be here. How's everyone doing? How are you doing, Leia? Um, you look really great. <laughs> well, thank you. I can always rely on lots of compliments from, from you, and I appreciate that. Uh, today, we're joined by Ofer Mula, CTO of Lumina, a company trying to help AI systems understand the real world better. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for hosting me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again, Ofer. So let's let's just get straight into it. For all the advancements um, that we've seen with AI systems today, I'm still very curious about why cameras, especially AI-driven cameras, can't seem to get, you know, human movements correctly. Just the other day, um, somebody was telling me about how um, an AI system saw a shadow uh, and the thought that it was a person. So what's the big problem here? Why can't AI systems recognize human movement? Well, I think it depends on which layers you're putting and what you call an AI system. Um, if an AI system, for example, is focusing only on detection, okay? They just want to see people uh, with some kind of a generic models and things like that. Uh, sometimes they see a shadow, they consider it as a person, right? Because People overnight might look, you know, more dark and things like that. So it really depends which layers you're putting in your AI system. If it's very basic detection only and things like that, you might get many false detection and uh, basically false insights. Ophir, when you dug into existing systems, what, what surprised you the most about how they see the world? Was it lighting or posture or maybe even timing? I think it's uh, I think it's understanding that every scene is is different, right? Um, you may agree with me that today uh, a person walking in Chicago, for example, in winter, it doesn't look like someone uh, over summer uh, on Miami Beach, as an example, right? So, I think uh, um, I think that understanding that uh, every scene is different, every scene is having a different context uh, from from movement of people, and but also to how do they look, right? Cameras that are viewing from top doesn't look like cameras that are viewing from front and things like that. Once you understand that, you need to understand, you understand how you are and what type of models and what type of AI solutions you need to, be, to put on top of cameras. It's interesting that you spoke about context because I talk to people in the AI space all the time and it's a recurrent theme in our conversations. Why is context such a very, very big problem? And I'm not ask, just asking why it's such a big problem. It also seems like it's a it's such a big problem that can't even be solved because no matter the advancements we're seeing in AI models, they still have really hard time with context. So it really depends on what type of solution, right? If you want to, um, you cannot squeeze the entire world into one model that will solve it all, right? Every scene is different. Uh, let's take, for example, uh, I don't know, a football game, okay? When a touchdown is scored, right, you know, you see the fans are jumping and waving their hands and hugging and kind of moving with something that if you just put it in a generic model, it will look like an aggression, right? So the only way to kind of uh, tackle it and kind of uh, bring a solution that is not flagging, you know, random flags all the time is build a model that is, uh, it's trained, it's understanding, it's seen, understanding the contest having some kind of an historical data. And once it's tuned and you understand that this is now a, a, a football stadium and people may jump, but they are walking in specific patterns and, and, and it's when there is a football game and things like that, then you can really build an AI solution that is not giving you, giving you a real insights, not just random flex. Can you tell us a bit about the origins of the technology? Did it have originally military applications? Where where did it stem from exactly? So we started from physical security, 
okay? Uh, we started from physical security, uh, not from military or things like that. We first wanted to tackle the fact, how can we understand that each scene different, right? We are not building a solution just for military or just for schools or just for hospitals, right? We first build a platform that understand where it's located, what are the patterns there, how people looks like. It's train itself. It's in a self-supervised that is kind of keeping the, the customer privacy, um, understanding the scene. And then only by that, it's giving each camera a specific model. Uh, this way, we can build, we build a platform that is suitable for military use case, but also kindergartens, right? Because at the end, what we need is someone that not human, right? Because we want to keep customer privacy, uh, to train the model and to tune the camera and understand what the camera see. And after we build this platform, we see our solutions, of course, in physical security, in, uh, in military solutions, but also in hospitals, but all, and also in operation. Because if you want to track people, there is now nothing different by tracking people or tracking iron bolts, as an example, right? I need to understand what is an iron bolt. I need to understand the pattern that it moves, right? Same as people. Let's talk about safety and security. There have been well-documented cases, I'm sure that you know about that, of, you know, systems showing facial, having facial recognition errors, bias issues, misclassifications, like what I told you about, you know, seeing trees as human beings or that kind of thing. Beyond the technicality, because this is safety here, if we have a, an AI system that essentially cannot see the world the way it's supposed to be, then that's really scary. How do we make these systems safe, really? Um, I think it's finding the right balance, okay, at the end, right? Um, you want the system to find you the bad guy every time. But you want to, you don't want to be arrested, uh, kind of getting all the time alerts that a bad guy is coming, a bad guy is coming, right? So you want to dynamically set a threshold based on the population that you see and based on the, the differentiation of the bad guy from the real, from the other world. So just being able to set this threshold dynamically, you'll be able to set a system that will not be perfect, right? There is no 100% perfect. There is no 100% accuracy when we promised it. You know, we are not there, but we need to be better than human viewing videos and you, human view, uh, viewing cameras. So once you are, we are setting this threshold and the, setting the balance correctly, then we can really rely on AI systems to be uh, better than humans that are monitoring videos. Are you able to share a specific situation, incident where your technology really came into its own? Um, tracked someone down, secured a situation, something you can share uh, in action? <sighs> well, there are, um, there are many. Um, I think, I think the one that is kind of, uh, there are many that are jumping. So we are, uh, located in uh, cities. Okay. And I started before by saying what, how we build our models. So we build our model by, training a detection for each cameras, understanding the contents where the camera is placed and, and, and getting historical footage. So in one of the cities um, that we are located, uh, we set an alert of uh, unusual activity. Unusual activity is basically alerting the, the one that is monitoring the video, uh, something bad is happening. Sometimes we don't really uh, can explain what is bad, but you know, look at that. And he got an alert around um 2 a.m i think in the middle of the night of the kindergarten that uh, there were uh some uh, uh females and males there uh some were drunk they were loitering for a long time now since the systems right was trained to detect people also overnight also with shadows like the problem that you mentioned and understand that this is a kindergarten you know people they are not supposed to be overnight there uh, for sure, not, not for a long time. Maybe they are passing, right? Uh, only as only an AI system like us that were able to do detection properly, understand the context where it's placed, and understanding historical footage that people are not hanging there over time. Even without setting an alert, it's pointing them that you know, uh, go and check. There is something bad is that is happening there. 
You talked about um, human detection as opposed to um, detection by AI systems the other time. Would you say that we're at a point where these AI systems are better at detection than human beings? And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I asked. Um, I, you know, sometimes when you write an article as a technology writer, you know, you pass it through an AI tool that's supposed to detect, you know, whether it was AI generated. And then the AI tool says that something you wrote by yourself was generated by AI. And, and I, I sort of like want to link that to the issue of with deep fakes, right? I, is there going to be a scenario where an AI system can detect deep fakes better than human beings, you know, or what is the confusion here? What is the potential? So we need to distinguish between deep fake, for example, of textual writing and things like that, like in, you can understand patterns. But if you're asking on the visual words, for sure, I think we passed already this point, right? Where people are monitoring videos and, and seeing videos, you like, like small squares over the screen, like the security guys. I think there were many researchers that showed that after 10 minutes, they are getting blind, right? Because it's the same patterns, right? They are viewing an image that, you know, overnight is most of the time is static, you know, they are not moving. So the human, as a human being, we are getting tired, right? We are getting tired on what you view, and sometimes we don't really see what is really happening. So on the visual words, for sure, I think that we passed it. Now, as for understanding on the deep fake, right, there is a, we can do a full podcast only on that, uh, regardless of the vision world, right, where it's, I think on, on, on the LLM sides, um, it's, it's a bit different about writing text and writing articles and things like that and analyzing whether this was writing, but, uh, written by someone that is human or not, because these models are driven at the end from what humans were reading before, right? They are reading articles and they are reading, uh, and they are getting the insights and they are just summarizing it based on what you want. So it's, it's a bit different. If you had to look a few years ahead, what does the next generation of physical AI look like to you? So to me, um, I don't want uh, that humans will define for AI what to detect for, right? I think it's right because some, at the end, think about like alerts that exist today. You know, someone is coming to whatever visual AI they're drawing a line and they're saying, you know what, if someone is passing this fence, it's, it's, a, it's something that is not correct, right? It's something that is unusual. And you know what, if people are standing here for more than one minute, it's unusual. Now, take the case that I spoke with you about. I don't want to define the camera, uh, what is usual and what is unusual. I don't want to define the context, right? I just want to place it. I want like a security guard, right? I want to point it here look on the environment, you know, monitor for a week, understand what is usual, understand what is unusual, and just let me know when something bad happens. And even not for something bad happens, right? If I want to, for example, let's take uh, uh, some restaurants, right? I want at the end, and I have cameras in the kitchen, right? I want to at the end to understand whether my employees are wearing gloves, right? Are they taking care of the food when they are preparing it? Um, I want them to summarize it, what happens. So I want to be able to communicate with the camera, with the free text language, understand what happened, get their insight based on 24 seven monitoring and without being able or being needed, uh, to define to the AI system what to look for. It seems to me you're talking about, um, cameras that are not just seeing the world, but are also intelligent in a way. Yeah, for sure. Right. Being able to detect, understand the contents, and have all this and have an access to the historical footage and historical insights, right? We kind of have the three layers in order to understand it, understand the world better. As a way to draw the curtains, um, what's one, I know you see a lot of misconceptions, but what's one misconception about AI perception that you wish the industry would finally drop? I think there are no magics, okay, at the end, right? Um, you need to get, and, and sometimes it's very hard to customers, right? Because they are seeing, you know, nice demos, you know, find me a person with a red shirt 
and hey, you get a person with the red shirt, right? And and you know, and and they're seeing and and it's really understanding whether your solution is having all the three layers, right? Because today with all this VLM, right, you can put an image and, and, and tell me what there is in the image. And they will tell you there are two people that are talking together. Now, is your system can really guarantee that it will monitor, it will not lose any events? Can I trust it, right? Only if you will explain to me how you build your platform, that it's not just one layer, it's, it's kind of, uh, Several layers that are built one on top of the other, and and what is and it's not just a generic VLM or generic model that is answering the world, right? You cannot fit the world into one solution into one model. It's it's more complex than that. Over, thank you so much for taking us into parts of AI that most people never think about, but that actually shape safe and trustworthy AI. Thank you. Thank you to everyone listening. This is Machine Dreams. More transparent, unfiltered conversations with the people shaping the future of AI are on the way. If you enjoyed this, subscribe, share it with someone curious, and stick around. There's so much more to come. Thanks again. See you next time.